Hello and welcome to the Robert J. Hermiller Gymnasium here at Ottawa Glandor for tonight's matchup between the Hilliard Bradley Jaguars and the Lima Senior Spartans. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Mark Bagley. And Mark, we got an excellent game tonight. It's game three of the OG Winter Classic against two teams that really have a contrasting style. Yeah, Hill, Hilliard Bradley from Columbus and, and Lima Senior uh, obviously from Lima and, and just uh, Hilliard Bradley wants long possessions. Uh, they're a good shooting team. They're a good passing team. And we know that Senior wants to speed them up and really do a great job uh, of getting uh, to the rim. Let's take a look at tonight's keys of the game, starting first with the Hilliard Bradley Jaguars. First for Bradley, they got a team rebound. They're outside, so they got to box an extra step and communicate on D. Number two, they got to be physical, both on offense and defense the entire time. And offensive execution, they got to do that for 32 minutes and move the ball and get their shooters in the right spot. And how about the Lima Senior Spartans? They've won eight of their last nine. What do they got to do to come away with the victory? Their pressure D is important, and they'll start out in half-court pressure defense. That's what's been really good for them the last nine games. But I look to them for them to mix up full court, too, to try to speed up uh, Bradley. They've got to attack the rim, get to the middle of the floor, and finish or kick to their shooters. And number three, they got to rebound and get out and run and create tempo. It is game three of the OG Winter Classic here at the Supreme Court. The Hillier Bradley Jaguars and Lima Senior Spartans, when we come back, we'll have the opening tip and starters for both teams don't go anywhere. You're watching Boys High School Basketball on WOSN. Welcome back to the Robert J. Hermiller Gymnasium here in Ottawa Glendorf High School as the Hiller, Hilliard Bradley Jaguars and Lima Senior Spartans get ready to get underway. Taking a look at tonight's starting lineup, first for the Jaguars, they're going to start number 24, David Heath, number 2, Cade Norris, number 25, Evan Abris, number 1, Andrew Lamb, and number 23, Garrett Sever. For Lima Senior, their starters, number zero, Anthony Mosley, number two, Jaquel Cotton, number 23, Jagger Hutchins, number one, Brandon Moore, and number 11, Amari Addy. Addy, the freshman on that team. Taking a look at a little bit more at the Jaguars, coached by Brett Norris. He has a local connection and record of 12-5 and five overall, 5-3 five and three in the OCC Conference, RPI of 32 for the Spartans. Coached by Quincy Simpson, 13 and 5, 7 and 5 in the Three Rivers Athletic Conference, and a 44 ranking in the Martin RPI, and that RPI coming into play tomorrow as we start looking at tournament selections. Opening tip is going to be controlled by the Spartans as Jaquel Cotton brings it up for Lima Senior. We'll see man-to-man -man the whole night from Bradley, and they're going to really play on the keys of helping and who's, gonna, who's drivers and who's their shooters. You can tell that right now. Brandon Moore gets it down into the corner to Hutchins. Hutchins, the sniper, three-point shooter for the Spartans, will look for some openings here early. Jaquel Cotton with the first shot of the game. No good. Rebound comes down to the Jaguars. And that's the shot that the Lima Seniors have to hit tonight for them to be successful because Bradley really is a scouting report team and really play keys as well. We talked about in pregame, two teams that have a, a very contrast style. Lima Senior used to playing up-tempo, up and down the floor. As you see the first two points of the night as Ian Abris comes up with the first two. Long three-pointer by Hutchins. That one's off. Rebound comes down to the Jaguars. And that's what Bradley wants. They want Lima Senior shooting threes uh, versus twos on drive and penetration. You're going to see a lot of patient offense, and most things will go through Norris right there. Norris able to connect on the three-pointer. Early 5-0 lead for Hilliard Bradley. And you can see their help side defense. that They are parked in the lane right now to try to prevent the drive from, from Alima Senior. Brandon Moore with the two-pointer. That one's off the side of the rim. Comes down to Bradley. And early on, this is the pace they want. Uh, Local product, Brett Norris, who played at uh, Crestview High School and coached at Delphi St. John's for many years. As we mentioned, that's the local connection for Coach Norris. As comes back up to Northwest Ohio. Brandon Moore tried to see if he couldn't get through the back door and get that basketball, poked away, but didn't. Leads to a wide open three for Bradley, but they can't connect. Jaquel Cotton with the rebound, pushes it down to Addy. Amari Addy, the freshman point guard. At times has played great this year. At other times, you know, freshman kind of doing freshman things, but he is learning and getting better every single game. That three-point shot by Cotton was no good. And, and so far defensively, Bradley's been in a position to contest every shot from three. And I would expect Lama Senior to really 
amp their pressure up and do some run and jump and some full court stuff tonight because a half court style is definitely in Bradley's favor. And that's what we were talking about, that contrast of style. You know, Bradley, they like having long possessions. They have no problem holding on to that basketball, moving around. Lima Senior likes to play the up-tempo. But here recently, we have seen, ever since uh, an Ottawa Glandorf win that second half, they went to a half-court defense instead of their traditional full-court press. They have been a different team. Won eight of their last nine after really struggling to get things going offensively as North lets another three-pointer go, and that one is good. Two three-pointers here in this first quarter for Cade Norris. And he had 29 of their 49 in a tough overtime loss last night on Tans Liberty. But uh, if you let him give him space, uh, he's a product of a coach's son. He's got two older brothers that play Division I at Loyola in uh, Wright State. And it's a family of four boys that just are absolute gym rats. Andrew Lamb gets whistled with that foul. It's his first, team first. Brandon Moore triggers the inbound. Senior Anthony Mosley. Hands it back off to Moore as he works around, gets it over to Hutchins. Hutchins going to let the three-pointer go. That one's no good, but there's Mosley for the putback and the and one. And what caused that whole thing was a great flare screen, which made Bradley have to help more, and they were out of position to box out, and that gave Lima Senior an offensive rebound and one opportunity. You can see this on the they, – they didn't have the help there, and they gave up the offensive rebound and one. Replay on our Charles River instant replay. It's Mosley now at the free throw line. Not able to connect. Lima Senior on the board finally. They're still trailing 8-2, to 5-10 left to go here in the opening quarter. Norris, pull-up jumper. He's feeling it early. Yeah, and if they don't do something different on him, he, he could have 30 tonight. Bradley has 10 points. Cade Norris has 10 points. Here's Adley. Addy. Addy going to drive. Gets it off the glass and in. Another and one opportunity for Lima Senior as Amari Addy attacks the lane and gets that one in. Yeah, he got the driving angle, and there was no help there. You can see the inside-out move. They had to stay home. And they had one opportunity here for Lima Senior, and that's what they want to do tonight, get to the hole to finish or create for others. Justin Brown whistled for that foul. His first team second. And Mariatti's free throw is no good. So far, Bradley's controlled the board 6-2. to two. Only one offensive rebound for Lima Senior so far. Ian Abris has to get rid of it. Garrett Sever comes over to get it. Ends up back in the hands of Cade Norris. Underneath the basket for Norris, has to get rid of it. Bradley able to maintain possession, and we're going to have another tie-up. This whistle is going to go on Anthony Mosley. It'll be his first, team's first. As both teams settle in, we'll, we'll see again what Justice Lima Sr. makes. Um, they're very deep, um, and Bradley is not, so we'll see if they wear them down with that kind of uh, pressure. Multiple substitutions into the game for Lima Senior. So you can see the sophomore Hutchins come out of the game. Number four, Marion Glenn has checked in, as has number five, Isaiah Wilson. And then Andrew Lamb has come back into the game for Hillier Bradley. And Lima Senior put two guys on Norris. Three-point shot is good. As Garrett Seaver comes up with his first three points of the game. And a quick shot by Lima Senior on the other end is no good. Rebound comes down to the Jaguars. And when they get scoring from other, point, other players like Seaver, another Northwest Ohio product. His dad played at Delphi St. John's for Brett Norris. So there's another local connection. Seaver one more time connects. Back-to-back three-pointers by Garrett Seaver. On cue, again, his, his father, uh, Gavin, played at Delphi St. John's for Brett Norris. So there's a lot of connections here family-wise. And we're going to have an early timeout by Lima Seniors. Coach Simpson is not happy as his team finds themselves down 12. It'll be a full timeout. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Lima Seniors premier sponsors Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years, with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Lima Senior takes the early Metzger Financial Services timeout as they want to talk about it. As Coach Simpson cannot be happy with the defensive effort of his team. Yeah, Bradley has got off to a great start. Four or five from three, two or two from two. I mean, there's six or seven to open up and have, have open looks on all their shots so far. And, Really, the, the first four minutes of this you know, game, about four-minute segments, Bradley just dominated this segment. 
Four three-pointers for the Jaguars. Two by Cade Norris, two by Garrett Siebert. Isaiah Wilson now hands it off to Zion Jackson, who's checked into the game. And it appears to be zone, but it's not. It's, it, it's a man-to-man -man defense on scouting report. They're playing the help. Brandon Moore not able to connect on his three-point try. And have a foul. This one is going to go on Isaiah Wilson. And they're, nope. go, they're going full-court press. I mean, we're waiting for that. They've been mostly a half-court team um, lately, but they have to pick the tempo up some way. And they go baseball pass, and he threw it out of bounds. First turn over the game. So you saw that pressure. Lima Senior brought it and instantly turned into a turnover. So it had been a little bit different over the last couple of weeks seeing Lima Senior you know, settle into that half-court defense. Coach Simpson said last night that come tournament time they were going to go back to his full-court press. But not liking the defensive effort here early besides to pull it out now. He's trying to get some activity for the players. A little flat to start this game, and I think he wants to get, get them up and into people. Brandon Moore lets the three-pointer go. This one's going to be off. And we've seen this out of this offense from Lima Senior a few times. That offense sometimes can just struggle just a little bit. They seem to be just a little bit off on shots right now. And we're going to have a blocking foul. This one's going to be on Brandon Moore, I believe. They're going to check on Caden Norris. He looks to be okay. So this will be the fourth team foul for Lima Senior. And the sign of, uh, of, a, of a program that you Roy really is to take, make other teams shoot the shots that you want them to shoot. And so far, Lima Senior's two for ten, and Bradley has had nine defensive rebounds. That just shows you there's been one offensive rebound and one. That's it. It's one and done for Lima Senior. Now Bradley trying to add to their lead. Siebel gets it over to Lamb, who gets it into the hands of Cade Norris. He's been hot here in the first quarter. Norris. Kicks it out, three-point try on its way, and good. This time it was Ian Abris with a three-point try, and, and that you, is the fifth three-pointer for the Jacks. And you saw the patience of Norris there. He has a smaller player on him now, and he did a great job of seeing it over the top and found another shooter, and that's, again, the fifth three. Anthony Mosley goes strong down below the basket and puts that one in. Mosley now with five points. Lima Senior has six. Just man-to-man -man full court pressure by Senior right now. We'll see as the game goes on if they start doubling it a little bit. Excuse me, Infinity Mosley has four points on the night. As you see, Marion Glenn reach in there, try to take that one away. Going to have a foul on the loose ball, though. This one is going to go on Glenn. And that those are the kind of plays that, that Senior has to make tonight. Layup turnovers to create tempo. They can get in their press. And right now, they just haven't been able to get into anything defensively to get stopped so they can get into any kind of press or run at them. Lamb almost loses it, able to gather it back in. Gets it over to Norris. Back to Lamb. Lamb looks to drive. Three-point try on its way. Abris can't get that one to go down. Fight for the loose ball. Race for the loose ball. Comes up to the Spartans. Addy works down into the corner, pulls up for three. That one's no good. Mosley does a nice job getting to that rebound. Gives Lima Senior another try. And Amarion Glenn cashes it in. Three points for him. They're one for eight from three, but what got them that basket was an offensive rebound, Nate, and that's what they have to do, make those effort plays. Almost the five-second call is. Lima Senior made it difficult on that inbounds, but Bradley able to get it in, and they get it up to the front court. When they put somebody smaller on Norris, they'll go inside to him with the post. Cutting through all the traffic was David Heath. And went up strong, able to get that one to go in. He'll make a trip to the free throw line. Isaiah Wilson gets wh whistled for the foul. It's his first, team's fifth. Coach Norris said he got banged up a little bit in last night's game, and, and he's been dominating the, the defensive rebounds. You can see he's exhausted right now, uh, trying to complete the end one. David Heath at the free throw line, trying to convert the end one, and he does. More substitutions coming in for Hilliard Bradley. Number 15, Jordan Reed Davis coming into the game for the first time. 22-9, Lima Senior trying to see if they can't get this one close here at the end of the first quarter. 
They immediately have a whistle as Reed Davis just checking in is going to get whistled for his first foul. And both teams, uh, you know, have fouled this first quarter. It's been, it's been they've called it pretty tight. Um, it's it's five four fouls. So we're going to see both these teams in the bonus early second, second quarter. Glenn looking for somewhere to go with the basketball. Drops it down to Mosley. Mosley gets rid of it when the double team comes. Glenn lets the three-point try go. No good. Mosley with the rebound. It's going to be Wilson's turn now. He lets the three-pointer go. No good. Rebound comes down to the Jags as Kay Norris pushes it up. He's going to go all the way to the rim. Can't get that one to go down. Ends up with it back. Extra pass now. Back into the corner. Seaver. Three-pointer good. Garrett Seaver, three three-pointers here in the first quarter. Another coach's son, uh, he's hit three threes, and they, they put on an absolute clinic in this first quarter with ball movement and, and just uh, smooth that execution offensively and great team defense. Now a 16-point lead, five seconds left to go. Addy loses the basketball, but it stays with the Spartans. He's going to drive, gets it up with the left hand, and in right before the buzzer. A little momentum to go back towards the Spartans as the first quarter comes to a close. 25 to 11, the Jags all over the Spartans. We'll be back with the second quarter on WOSN. Welcome back tonight. Scoreboard is presented by Layfield Industrial Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and Greenville. Second quarter just about underway as the Jags will begin with the basketball. Miller Bradley on top, 25 to 11. Here's Seaver, who seemed to not be able to miss from behind the arc. Going to have a whistle. This one's going to go against Brandon Moore away from the basketball. It's, looks like he got tied up with Garrett Seaver. And we'll see again what kind of adjustments Lima Senior is going to make right now uh, in the second quarter because they have to do something different. Right now, Bradley is very comfortable offensively. And Here's Norris. Long pass over to Seaver. Three-point try one more time. Can't connect on that one more with the rebound. Brandon Moore going to push the pace. Gives it up over to Addy. Addy finds Mosley. Long pass. Bends it back into the corner as the Spartans are trying to get the offense going. Isaiah Wilson gets cut off. Has to kick it back out. Addy looks to drive. Couldn't go baseline. Defense had to collapse on him. So now it's going to be Moore's time. Finds a cutting Addy along the baseline, and Amari Addy gets it in for two. And Lima Senior finally got into the middle of the paint and made a nice pass there so they could finish inside. They've done a good job finishing inside. He just, just can't get any looks from a layup. They're starting to double now a little bit. Lima Senior is. Lamb throws this one into the backcourt. That's going to be an over and back violation. There aren't too many games you see, Nate, where you're down 25-11 after one quarter and have no turnovers. But that, that was the situation. Right, right now, Lima Senior has zero turnovers, and, and Bradley only has two. But that's the kind of defense Bradley plays. They're not trying to turn you over. They're trying to make you shoot the shot they want you to shoot. And there's also not a lot of games where you see teams come out and make six three-pointers three pointers in the first quarter. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so it's been that helps, no doubt. Isaiah Wilson lets the three-pointer go. He can't connect. Jaquel Cotton with the rebound and the putback. And that's four offensive rebounds now, and they're starting to pose their will a little bit on the glass, and that's how they get back in the game. Back to a 10-point lead. Cave Morris has to work against Moore. Gets rid of it. Shot on its way. And this one is good as Justin Brown comes into the game and makes a three-point try. We're going to have a, another timeout. This one's going to be like Lima Senior, and it's going to be a full one as well. So we'll step aside. The Jags on top of the Spartans, 28-15. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our replays are provided by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Where will your team land in the brackets? And what does their road to Columbus look like? Get the most in-depth analysis and hear from the coaches this Wednesday night at 9 p.m. The WOSN Selection Show presented by Layfield Welding and Industrial Supplies only on WOSN Wednesday at 9 p.m. Lima Senior takes another quick timeout. Quincy Simpson wanted to try to talk to the defense, I believe. 
looking at that board, and I think Bradley called that after the make. I think they didn't like what was going on defensively. And I think Coach Norris looked at the board and called that timeout. I think you're right. The officials looked like they were talking to the Lima Senior bench like it had come from them, but it gets marked off on Bradley. So that might have been a Hillier-Bradley timeout. And either way, another Metzger Financial Services timeout taken here in the first half. Nice head fake as he was trying to, as Wilson was looking for Glenn down low. But Mario not able to gather in that pass. Ends up out of bounds after being deflected by a Jaguar. You see Jagger Hutchins comes back into the game. Hutchins taking inbounds. Lobs it into Mosley. Mosley working against Heath. And we're going to have a foul on Heath. Will be a shooting foul. So Anthony Mosley is going to go to the free throw line as you can see on our Charles River instant replay there. He was trying to get some position and back down towards the basket. So Anthony Mosley at the line shooting the least famous recipe chicken free throw. Not able to connect on the first one. The line of senior 0 for 3 from the free throw line. They got to capitalize. When you're down 13, you got to make and score points when the clock is stopped. And uh, Bradley's got their first player in foul trouble right now, their post player, Heath. And, um, that was the right call. He was already falling down when contact was made, and, and an excellent call by a veteran crew. Anthony Mosley not able to connect on either one of his free throws to keep this a 28-15 game. And, and that's 0 for 4 from Lima Senior from the line. Cade Norris goes baseline, puts it up through some contact, able to get it in. Strong move by Cade Norris. And he is really can score outside, inside. He, he can do it all for, for Bradley and has had a great start to this game. Isaiah Wilson working against Brown. Off the glass, can't get it to go, but it's going to be last touched by Bradley, so it'll stay with the Spartans. That's the one thing that Lima Senior starting to pose their will is the off the glass. It's giving them more possessions, which is what they need against Bradley. Jaquel Cotton on the drive, gets it off the glass for two. Because they're six for nine from, from two right now, and that's where they've been successful, and most of those have been offensive rebounds. Norris has to pick up his dribble, looks for somewhere to go with it, drops it off to Seaver. He finds Abris. Okay, Norris gets it back. They run that motion offense, and you watch every player catch it. They're triple threat, they pivot, they do all the fundamental things, and this is what they want to get a possession to get uh, Norris the ball in position to get somebody smaller. And you can tell through all of those passing and all that motion, nobody really looking to get, get a shot up. They were just trying to get to the position. Seaver, head fake, gets into the, can't get it to go down, gets his own rebound. Then it ends up back to the Spartans. And it's going to go out of bounds and stay with Hillier Bradley. So lots of action there. All that, we, we call that false motion to create the match up that you want. They got it, and a great, great uh, shot fake by uh, Seaver, and a great hustle play by both teams there. I think Garrett Seaver caught everybody off guard by not taking that three-pointer. That's where he's made all of them so far, but decided to see if he couldn't get a little bit closer. But regardless, when it was all said and done, they kept the possession. He's going to try the other side. Three-point shot up and good. Garrett Seaver now with four three-pointers here in the game. Eight for 11 from uh, three here, and we just watched a clinic on, on execution and, and making shots. It, it's one thing to execute, but another thing to hit shots. Zion Jackson kicks it over to Hutchins. Hutchins goes around with the right hand. A little bit of weave action up top for the Spartans. Jackson got cut off, has to go somewhere with the basketball. Has it poked away, Garrett Seaver comes up with it. That's the first turnover of the game for Lima Senior. Caden Norris steps into one, can't get that one to go down. Anthony Mosley gathers up the rebound. Isaiah Wilson's going to push it ahead, goes right through a couple of Jaguars. And we'll see if we're going to have a jump ball or a foul. It's going to be jump ball. And the possession arrow favors the Spartans. Check out the instant replay by Charles Rivers. Isaiah Wilson just went into attack mode, tried to split the defense. Hillier Bradley did a nice job of getting in there, grabbing a hold of the basketball without getting a foul. But then that time, saw Jordan Reed Davis just check into the game and immediately pick up a foul. 
Yeah, he got beat on the back cut, and I think him and Coach Norris have a few words here. They're only playing seven guys right now, and the, the, the one player who's been hurt, you can see him in the hallway right now, trying to stay loose with two fouls. So they're trying to limp through this first half with six players to, to try to finish up. So Marion Glenn's at the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. And able to connect on his first one. And Lima Senior finally scored the clock stop. That's her first made free throw. This is their sixth one coming up. And that can allow them to press and do a lot of different things when you make shots or free throws. When not able to connect on the second. 33-18, 3.17 left to go. Cade Norris brings it up against Glenn, passes it off. Andrew Lamb, who checked back into the game, has it. And Reed Davis, guarded tightly by Moore, has to get rid of it. Ends up back in the hands of Norris. Norris, he's going to drive off the glass and good. He's going to go to the free throw line one more time. And that was 6-4 versus 6-4. And he went left hand and just his physical strength right here was just too much for Lima Senior. He, went, he swung the ball through and and one. Anthony Mosley is a strong kid as well. It's not too often he doesn't get the better part of that battle. At that time, Cade Norris does a nice job getting down low, getting it in. And now he shoots the in one at the Beast Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. He's able to connect. And again, when you have older brothers that play Division I and your dad's the coach, uh, that's expected out of you to be able to finish those kind of plays. And he's had an outstanding first half. So the Jags push their lead to 18. Lima Senior trying to get some momentum going their way. Marion Glenn, the free throw line, drops it off to Mosley. Mosley gets it over to Addy. Addy works into the lane. Has it taken away. Garrett Seaver runs into Marion Glenn, who really had nowhere to go, was trying to stay out of the way, but he's going to get whistled for the foul. And both teams now are the one-on-one -on -one to finish the half. And so we'll take another trip to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. This time it's going to be Garrett Seaver shooting the one and one. Seaver's first shot is good. For the first time that Garrett Seaver scored a point that hasn't been from behind the three-point line tonight. They've shot the ball so well that no one moved from that. It was a one and one and all, all, all the players just stood there. And I think they just expect him to make it because he made another a shot tonight. Second shot is up and good as well. Norris and Seaver, 27 of the 38. And again, it, it appears like they're in a zone right now. Um, but they're, they're, they're in man. As a team, they're 4 for 4 from the free throw line as well. They right now just have some of the hottest shooting that we've seen in quite some time. Another foul gets called. Anthony Mosley's going to make another trip to the free throw line. Free throws seven and eight here. That's six offensive rebounds. So they haven't turned it. They've offensive rebounded, but Lima Senior just has not got a lot of shots. They haven't shot well from the outside yet. Garrett Seaver whistled for his first foul as Anthony Mosley makes his first free throw. That, that puts Lima Senior at two for seven from the line so far. They, again, they got to get score when the clock has stopped when it's this margin right now to try to get back in it the last two minutes of the second quarter. Anthony Mosey lines up his second free throw, not able to connect to the least famous recipe chicken free throw line. 38 19, 210 left to go here in the first half. Andrew Lamb works against Hutchins. Here's that false motion to try to get Norris in the spot he wants it, and he's going right to the basket. Norris that time looked like he might have missed a wide open lamb cutting to the basket, kept it himself, but can't connect. Brandon Moore brings it up for the Spartans. Lima Senior needs a great possession, but you see right now they're standing. They think it's the zone, but it's just the over help that Bradley does yeah. defensively. Moore adjusts, takes a better look at three. That one just can't go in. And Kind of been the story of the first half for the Spartans. They've had good looks. They look like they've had good shots. It even looks like it's about to go down, but somehow still cannot come away with a basket. That's one for 12 now. They eight for three. But again, they've got seven offensive rebounds, a good hustle play there. And they have to, if they can just make one shot here to get them back going again, they just can't make that shot to get them over the hump so they can press. Um, and Bradley has really just imposed their will uh, the whole half uh, for 15 minutes. Here's Cotton, feeds Mosley down low. Mosley has it poked away. 
As you saw, it looks like Abris came in to try to swipe that one away, and he's going to get whistled for the foul. Another opportunity with the clock stopped here before half, one minute, 15 seconds to get some points with the clock stopped. This is free throw nine and possibly 10 for senior. They got to make them. First foul for Abris, but the eighth team foul for Hilliard Bradley. Anthony Mosley makes another trip to Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. Not able to connect on the front end of the one and one. Gets his hand tied up as he tried to grab that basketball away from Abris. So we'll make a trip to the other side of the court. And that's just a frustration foul. He missed a free throw, and then he did the, the cardinal sin of fouling uh, after missing it. Now Bradley's going back to, to shoot a one and one on their end. And the other part about that is yet a minute 13 left to go here in the half, and Anthony Mosley with that foul now has three on the game. Yeah, that, that's just a play that's frustrating for the young man and, and for the coach as well. So Abris leaves that one short. Lima Senior comes up with the rebound. Amari Addy kicks it over to Moore, over to Hutchins, and back to Moore. Tried to go to the inside, but has it poked away as Andrew Lamb now brings it up for the Jacks. Andrew Lamb tries to clear out and ends up into the hands of Seaver. Brandon Moore almost able to come up with that one. As you see, Seaver go to the ground. As Looks like Coach Norris got a timeout because he looked like they were going to lose that possession and didn't want to risk it. So a 30-second timeout by Hilliard Bradley. Is, they just want to make sure they can talk real quick, kind of regroup, and keep the possession. Yeah, and this is the point of the game. That's always the strategy thing. Do you call the timeout there? Do you get a jump ball at your possession? You know, every coach has different philosophies there. Coach Norris and I are good friends. I'll, I would argue that. You know, you want to save those timeouts for the fourth quarter. And, but he's a lot smarter, won a lot more games than I have. So that was a, a, a good timeout there by uh, Bradley. And, and Lima Senior needs anything positive to happen this last uh, 52 seconds. They, they just need something to go well for them. A, a layup steal, a, you know, make a couple free throws. They just needed something to get going because they're just struggling right now on a, on a Saturday afternoon. And this is a team that can score quick if they're given the opportunity. They do a nice job of turning defense into offense. As you see Jagger Hutchins doing a nice job playing center field that time, pokes that one away. Brandon Moore comes down, leaves it short, gets his rebound, and gets it up for two. And that's what drives coaches nuts when you call a timeout and then you throw it right to him and then give up an offensive rebound. Um. I'm a senior trying to see if they can't get one more stop. Almost have another turnover as Jaquel Cotton went for that basketball, ends up in the lower legs that time of Cade Norris. But Cade Norris, as he was running, got tripped up over Cotton, gets called for the travel. Coach Norris not happy with the call, asking for some explanations on that one. But either way, it'll stay with Lima Seniors. Amari Aye brings it up with 25 seconds left to go. Yeah, it appeared to be a trip there, but uh, didn't see it. And then they oh, Cotton for three. And that's what I'm talking about. They've had two positive things happen, a turnover, and a three, they've had two turnovers and a three and a two, and that's what Lima Senior needs, only down 14 now. Seven seconds left to go. And I believe that might be Brandon Moore getting whistled for that foul. If so, that would be his third. It is, so now he has three. Anthony Mosley on the bench has three. As Brandon Moore is going to stay in the game as Cade Norris heads to the free throw line. He'll shoot two here, and... Uh, Lots of conversations happening, you know, on the bench and the, and the, and the officials. And Marion Glenn coming into the game as Anthony or Brandon Moore, excuse me, will check out. Don't want to risk him picking up a fourth foul with just under seven seconds left to go. That's an issue. A lot of seniors got a lot of guys with fouls right now. Aiden Norris, successful trip to the least famous recipe free throw line. Five seconds left to go with Mariatti. Three seconds, going to have to take the shot, throws it up, and is not going to be able to connect as the first half comes to a close. At halftime, Hillier Bradley Jaguars on top of Lima Senior, 40-24. to We'll step aside and be back with the second half on WOSN. Welcome back to the Robert J. Hermiller Gymnasium here at Ottawa Glendorf High School, the Supreme Court. And the second half is just about underway. The Hillier Bradley Jaguars right now all over the Lima Senior Spartans, 40-24. to but when you look at the offensive numbers, you know, inside the perimeter, you know, Lima Senior hasn't looked that bad. Yeah, they were 8 for 12 for 67%. 
They had seven offensive rebounds, only three turnovers, and they're down 16. And that's because Bradley, a blazing 65% from the field. They are 8 of 12 for three, 67%. 6 and 7 from the line, 86%. And they're actually shooting the worst percent from two in this first half. So all three of their keys to the game, they have check marked here in the first half. But we did see some glimpses of Lyman Senior creating a few turnovers and, and hit a three at the end of the half. And we'll see what adjustments Coach Simpson does at halftime. He's a great coach, and, that, and we expect him to make some adjustments. We need to go down low to Cade Norris as he muffles his way in for two. And that was clinic execution. They got Norris in the block, and... Went right at him, and, and that was a great executed play by Bradley. Kel Cotton lets the three-pointer go, and that one's good. Kel Cotton had a big third quarter. So he had seven points, and he picks up right where he left off here in the third. We got to chip away at this thing, Lima Sr. does, and get it down to under 10 going into the fourth quarter. That, that should be their goal as they go. But And right now they're going right at him. Uh, he's got three fouls. They're going right at him inside. Yeah, you can see the strategy. They know that Brandon Moore is out there on the floor with three fouls. So Brandon Moore has to be careful. That was letting Kate Norris have some good looks underneath. But that time, Hilliard Bradley not able to connect. Dagger Hutchin, he pulls up for three. And it's good. Back-to-back -back three pointer for the Spartans. And as I said, they can get hot. They've got a couple really good shoot shooters and, and Cotton and Hutchins. Those guys have made over 33s between them and uh, are amongst them, and, and that's, that's going to be really important for them to make some shots. Here's Andrew Lamb. Started by Cotton, gets rid of it. Abrams ends up in the hands of Cade Norris. Cade Norris gets left all alone. Cade Norris comes up into a three-pointer. And, and that's the last player you want to leave. Uh, he's averaging about 18, and I think he's got 20 now. Ariadne on the hesitation drive. Can't get that one to go. Anthony Mosley comes up with the rebound. Extra pass down into the quarter. Addy lets it go, and he connects. Lima Sr., they were ice cold from the, from the perimeter there in the first half. And that is their third three-pointer already here in the second. And, and they've really created a little more tempo, and, and you know, it's incredible. All of a sudden, it's 12 points, and you, you think it's 25, and, it, and they cut it down to 12 now, and they're increasing pressure. The big thing with Lyman Senior is can they, can they pressure without fouling because right now uh, they're just holding Lyman Senior. Norris broke free and they grabbed two two hands around him and held him. And they're a round of players but they keep on fouling. Ariadne picks up back-to-back -back fouls in a matter of about two seconds off the clock. He's going to have to be careful here. I don't want to pick up that third one so early. And, and I look for Bradley to go in the post to Norris right now with a smaller player on him. Hey, Norris. They're going to go. And it looks like they're going to call their third foul on Amari Addy down low. Yeah, he's basically fouled, fouled two players into three fouls here. And they're calling everything here to start the third quarter for sure. Take a look at the Charles River instant replay. And a three-point shot is good. As Ian Abris comes up with his second three of the game. And Bradley is getting uh, contributions from the role players right now, which is something they haven't had as much recently, and they, they have tonight. And that last offensive possession for Hillier Bradley did not go very well for Lyman Sr. As it, they came away with three points and three fouls on Amari Addy. And he's not able to connect on that three-pointer. It's Cade Norris. As the double team gets it down low to Seaver. Seaver had to go around Anthony Mosley. And I'm not sure if they called jump ball. They called foul. They called a foul. This one's going to go against Mosley. That's going to be his fourth. And that's four team fouls, too, and only three minutes of action here. Um, and so that's an issue. Foul problems and bonus and... and Line of seniors desperately trying to get over that hill, and it's been a hard climb for him. David Heath, he's trying to create some space. Can't get that one to go. Moore comes up with the rebound. Brandon Moore going to drive against Lamb. Gets it up and in. They're going to count it and one. Brandon Moore went to work, went through some contact, and able to get the two points. You watch this inside-out move through the legs. It got contact, and 
he was in the act of shooting there, and that is a, it's not continuation, but he was in the act of shooting when he got hit, and that's the right call. Brandon Moore makes his first trip to the Lee Samus recipe, recipe chicken free throw line. Leaves that one short, not able to finish the end one. And that's been a critical thing. Down 13, they've missed eight free throws, two for 10 from the free throw line tonight. That's just a huge play when, when you're struggling to get back in the game. Double team coming for Norris. Norris has no choice but to try to create a little bit of space that time, but the timeout comes from the bench first. As Norris looks like he might be limping. We'll have to keep an eye on that. This one's going to be a full timeout by the Jags, so we'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. And Lima's senior premier sponsor is Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years, with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Hillier Bradley takes the timeout to keep the possession as Cade Norris had found himself in some trouble against the double team. As Lima Senior's defense trying to ramp up the pressure to create a couple extra possessions. They are, and there's no reason to panic right now. It's a 13-point game. Bradley's down to two timeouts, but they can't panic and foul because the last thing they want to do is give Bradley free chances at the free throw line. Marion Glenn with a good defense against Lamb up top. He's able to get rid of it. Norris fights through contact by Hutchins. Garrett Seaver thought about the three-pointer for a second, decides against it. Still has his dribble. Finds Heath now. Norris going to go to work as Jaquel Cotton has come over on the switch. Immediately with the help defense from Lima Senior, he has to get rid of it. Seaver, he's going to drive, bounces off the bottom of the backboard, ends up in the hands of Hutchins. Almost thrown away, but Brandon Moore able to gather it in. That was good defense by a senior by going straight up and, and uh, great play. Brandon Moore's three-pointer just a little bit off. Seaver comes in for the rebound. And right now, senior's starting to double Norris. Not a whole lot of challenge that time for Garrett Seaver, but not able to finish with the left hand. Lima Senior's got to take advantage of some of these defensive stops. And they do as a Marion Glenn hits a big three-pointer. That's a huge shot. A missed lamp on one end and then a three-point on the other end. And it's down to 10. And, and I said that's a good goal to get to the end of the third quarter. They're already there. Lima Senior looking for another defensive stop. Hutchin has Heath down in the corner. Their pressure is really starting to extend to push them out. Farther and farther, the Norris caught the ball at half court there. I am a little surprised that the Jaguars continue to play so far away from the basket with as many people in foul trouble as Lima Senior has. And as I say that, they go inside. Andrew Lamb comes away with two. And that was a great pass by Norris to be unselfish in the backside, and that was a huge basket for them. And I think they're trying to. Lima Senior is just pushing them out. Marion Glenn, long three-pointer. Halfway in and out. Rebound comes down to the Jags one more time. And that's the question you ask. How many times can you climb a mountain to get back in the game? They're expending a lot of energy right now to try to get back in this game. Another foul. This time it's going to come on Jaquel Cotton. That's one of the few Spartans not in foul troubles. That's just his first. And that's uh, five team fouls now for Lima Senior. And they're a couple away from being the bonus, and we got you know, 10 minutes plus left in this game. Bob into Norris, able to gather it in right back underneath. Abris not able to connect as Addy tracks down the rebound. And they've missed two layups the last three possessions on, on great plays. All right, Addy loses his dribble. Abris comes up with it. He's going to go all the way up with the left hand and in. That was a really good skill move there to cross over. Ian Abris with five in the quarter. Three-point try, no good by Moore. And he's going to go back to the Jacks. And that was a really good offensive possession by Lima The ball swung from side, middle side. And they got an open look, but just couldn't cut, capitalize and finish. Lima Senior staying with the pressure, and we have a five-second call. So Lima Senior able to get the basketball right back. That was great pressure by Lima Senior. They tried to release Norris on the long pass, and, and Lima Senior's pressure caused a five-second call. They couldn't use the timeout. He's only got two left, so they had to eat it. A dead ball turnover there for Hilliard Bradley. Brandon Moore on the isolation, working against Norris. Kicks it over. Zion Jackson now. He's around. 
Senior trying to go down low, finally give it to Moore. Moore working against Norris. Kicks it out. Isaiah Wilson, three-point try is good. Keep on chipping away. Got to 11 again. They got to play defense without fouling here the last minute 43 of the, of the, of the uh, third quarter. Lima Senior now has five different players who've made a three-pointer here in the quarter. They are trying to come back, and that's going to be an over and back as John Brown was in the front court and jumped back, and while he was in the air, got that basketball. Lima Senior gets a fortunate call, going to get it back, and have an, has an opportunity here. You said going into the fourth, they needed to be within 10. They have an opportunity to do just that. Yeah, and, and what they've started to do, too, is double-team Norris and, and, and get the ball to his hands no matter what, and that, that's been a good move by them because he's a good passer, but you can't do it all. Isaiah Wilson. Made the three-pointer the last time down. Kicks it down into the corner to Addy. Lima Senior being patient. Going to have a good look. Brandon Moore's going to drive, spins, has to get rid of it. Here's Addy down low, has it blocked, and ends up into the hands of Garrett Seaver. Cade Norris is going to run. Down into the corner to Brown. We're going to have an offensive foul. It looks like Cade Norris is too much of the head of steam that time. Great heads-up play by Zion Jackson. Playing his feet, know that that contact was coming. That's one of the few fundamental things he hasn't done tonight. He didn't jump stop there, and he, he ran over him. That was a great play on a charge, and those are the kind of plays that you have to make to get back in a game where you're just not playing your best basketball. But again, a chance to get the, the lead to nine or eight even uh, with a minute to go here in the third quarter. Marion Glenn, head fake got his defender to go. Got the contact, going to take a trip to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line to shoot two with 48.1 seconds left to go in the quarter. And, and when you're climbing that mountain, we've talked about it, you have to make free throws. Uh, you have to, all, everything has to go right for you to get back in the game. And they haven't done that tonight to this point, but now's their chance. Glenn's first free throw is good. Does make it a 10-point lead. Forty-two, fifty-two. Marion Glenn with an opportunity to make this a single-digit lead for the first time since early in that first quarter. Lima Senior has had to grind and climb for quite a while here. The defense has done a pretty solid job of slowing Hillier Bradley down, not getting as many looks at the three-point shot as they did in the first half. Glenn's shot is off, so it will stay a double-digit lead. And we're going to have a foul. This one is going to go on Glenn, I believe they called that on. They called that on Lima Senior. That's 16 fouls, so we're, we're looking at bonus uh, the rest of the way here. So that was, it was actually called on Jaquel Cotton. That is the 15th foul for Lima Senior. We'll, we'll see if Senior doubles uh, Norris again. Here they come. Ariadne just kind of laying in wait that time. Tried to come over and trap him when he crossed midcourt, not able to get there. So now the Jags will have an opportunity here. 30 seconds left to go to see if they want to try to hold for the last shot of the quarter. And Zion Jackson is playing good defense. David Heath gets mixed up with his feet and ends up on the floor. Jackson's going to pick up the foul. And you see here, he just a little over aggressive. You got to know the time and score, and, and they're not going to score out there. You got to remember, too, people watching, this is a high, true high school floor. These teams are used to playing on both floors now, college floor. So that's a lot, again, why you see the space, you know, of Bradley so far close to half court because this is a shorter floor. One and one opportunity for David Heath. As he steps to the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. He's ready to send his first shot. It's up, and it is good. He has played an outstanding game tonight. Uh, he, you know, you don't look at the points, but he has controlled the defense of the glass. He's been great inside. He's undersized. He's banged up. He got in foul trouble, but you know, he's got about six points, about six or eight rebounds, and really has done a great job for this team. Second shot by Heath is good as well as William Bradley continues to shoot well from the free throw line. Under 20 seconds left to go here in the quarter. Lima Senior trying to see if they can't make this a 10 or 9 point game going into the fourth. Isaiah Wilson directing traffic. Gets cut off. Here comes the double team. Has to get it over to Hutchins. 
Almost lost it, ends up off the back of Seaver. So Glenn Long, three-pointer just short. The Marion Glenn got a clear look at it, but couldn't connect. Lima Senior cuts into the lead. They're within striking distance as we head to the fourth. They're down 54-42. We'll be back on USN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard presented by Leifeld Industrial and Welding Supplies with locations in Coldwater and Greenville. Fourth quarter just about underway here at the Supreme Court. Lima Senior had to fight. Turned in an 18-14 quarter to cut into this lead. They're down 12. But honestly, when you watch this game, I mean, I know what the scoreboard says. I know what the stats show. But it just doesn't feel like it has been a domination by Hilliard Bradley. No, it doesn't right now, especially. And this is a big possession. I, I said 10, but a two or three here is exactly what they want. Uh, but, the, but the foul trouble is what's going to be the key here in the fourth quarter. Can they stay out of foul trouble? Extra pass over to Moore. Moore not able to connect on the three as Heath comes up with the rebound. And that's another rebound for Heath, and he has just controlled that end of the floor tonight. Okay, Norris working against Addy. Addy has three fouls on the night. I look for possession to get Norris in the post right here. They're in the bonus right now. They're bringing two guys to kind of cover them. Norris is able to split the defense, but it's going to be Jagger Hutchins that gets the foul call. And you watch this, just his footwork. He was patient, and he jump stopped to a step through to get the contact, and just a really good, smart play. And again, you expect that from the coach's side. Cade Norris steps to the free throw line one more time. He's able, oh, excuse me, he misses that first shot. Looked good coming off the hands. Has a second opportunity from the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. This shot is up, and he makes the adjustment, and it's good. And a buzzer come from the scorer's table. As Cade Norris hits a milestone, that's what the stoppage is for. Cade Norris with that free throw. Becomes a thousand point scorer on his career, so congratulations to that young man. He's only a junior, and you can see dad there. He wants the game to get started again. It's typical old dad. Hey, we'll celebrate later on. Let's win the game first. Yeah, it's one of those milestones that, when, especially when you're out on your home floor, can be a little bit difficult to try to, to celebrate, especially when you're trying to hold on to the lead. Either way, a big milestone for Cade Norris. He leads the team in scoring tonight with 21. You see Isaiah Wilson goes into attack mode that time, gets into the lane, goes high off the glass for two. And that was the key for Lima Cedar to get to the rim off the drive. They just did right there. Garrett Seaver did a nice job, nice job of not panicking that time, able to hold on to the possession. And Hilliard Bradley wants to take a timeout. It looks like it is going to be just a 30-second timeout so they can talk about some things. I think if Coach Norris had 10 timeouts tonight, he'd use them all. He's used four. There's six and a half minutes to go, but he, he really values possessions, and he knows that they're the one that won the rest of the game, and I really think he wants to really get, get the mindset to his team that Lima Senior is not going to stop playing. I mean, a Quincy Simpson coach team will compete and battle, and this game is far from over, and he knows that. See the upcoming schedule for both teams. Some difficult games on the tap for the Jags. And as you look at the Spartans' upcoming schedule, Trotwood, Madison, Fremont, Ross, and Finley to close out the season. So still a lot left to play for. A lot of games, a lot of difficult ones for both of these teams before we get to the tournament play. But now, as you mentioned, tournament draw happens tomorrow. And a little bit different look than what we're used to with the RPI playing such a big part in. Yeah, another foul right there that just a smart play by Norris to create a little contact and then get grabbed. And the interesting part about the Mart PI is they're not using it in Central Ohio. So they have their huge sectional drawing. Division one, there's like 70 teams. They'll go one from 70 to see them. There's four district champions out of there. It's, it's unbelievable. You see Norris able to connect from the Lee's Famous Rescue free throw line. And I did think that that was kind of unique that you take such a, a, a drastic difference in how the seat's going and we're only going to do it one part of the state. Yeah, and, and for me, this would have been a great year to test it out Northwest Ohio and see how different the seedings were from the actual coaches voting. Because they also threw in the, the, the you know, added wrinkle of you can pass 
if you're a, a, a top four seed. So a lot of things on that. Wilson's three-pointer almost goes down. That, as you can kind of hear the groan from the bench and from the fans as that one looked like it was going to go down. That would have been a big shot for the Spartans. Yeah, that would have been that 10-point difference. And, and you can tell the groan was that kind of sums up seniors' night tonight. Just almost, but not quite. And, and Bradley's going to spread them out right now. And, and they're in the double bonus the rest of the way. If they can control the ball and, and make free throws, uh, they're a, and they'll attack when they have an opportunity, but they're, they're, they're content just to. Moore's got to be careful. He looks like he's getting a little frustrated there. Yeah. But he's playing with three fouls. Tried to take the offensive foul that time, but we're going to have the tie up down low. Jaquel Cotton reaches down, grabs the basketball. Possession arrow favors the Jags. He's got to be careful because if it's a foul and a technical, he'd be fouled out of the game right now. He counts as both, you know, personal and a technical. And you got to control your composure because this game is far from There's a lot of time left. And we know Lima Senior can score. They have the athletes to get it done. And they have a whistle. Not quite sure what was called. It's a five-second call. Five-second call. Yeah, and, and again, Bradley can live with that. Great defense by Lima Senior, but it's a dead ball turnover. And you can play defense. And, and you can't play defense on a live ball turnover. And they can live with that. But the clock is a friend of Lima Senior. There's a lot of time left. They don't have to panic yet. Now Brandon Moore, under six to go in the game. Lima Senior needs some points on this possession. Moore pulls up for three, and it goes down. Brandon Moore with a big three-pointer for the Spartans. And it, it's taking a little longer than I thought, but the, they're at that magic ten-point spot now. And now, you know, a four-possession game, a lot of things can happen here. All it takes is a few turnovers and a few missed free throws and got ourselves a game. David Heath goes to drive, goes right into Hutchins. He's going to get whistled. That'll be his third. And what a smart play by Heath. He created the contact, but because he was moving sideways, you can see that. He's moving sideways, and he, and he fouled him on that on that shot. It's, again, two shots the rest of the way. Bradley only has three team fouls. Heath's first free throw from the least famous recipe chicken free throw line is good. David Heath quietly having a nice night tonight. Getting it done from the free throw line. This is his first one of the night. And we got some, we got some good play from Heath and Abris has got nine and obviously Seaver and Norris. And it's been a really team event so far for Bradley. Lima Senior just down 11, still plenty of time. Looking to come away with some points here on this offensive possession. Mosley working down, down low as Heath comes over the top. He'll get whistled for the foul. That'll be Heath's second. As you mentioned, the Jags, plenty of fouls still to give as that is just the 14th foul. That was three on Heath. He was at the, that, so that, that, that's a big factor because they're not playing many guys this half at all. They, they pretty much stuck to six guys. and They played eight in the game, but they haven't subbed very much at all here lately. The very unofficial scorebook fails me once again. I just used the, the scoreboard in front of me, so it wasn't <laughs> like I was keeping track. Isaiah Wilson, he's going to go to work. We're going to have a foul. Quincy Simpson talking with the officials. Yeah, we had a fourth official there. Quincy was right next uh, to Tate Mayberry and, and uh, helped him with that call right there. That was great. So now five team fouls for the Jaguars. Inbounds comes to Moore. Moore turns around right hand. Good. Great post up right there to finish. And, hey, we're under 10. And, and seniors right there, plenty of time left. Good timeout by Coach Simpson. 4.44 left to go in the game. The Jaguars on, Jaguars on top, 58-49. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. There we go. 
Welcome back to Robert J. Hermiller Gymnasium. Another quick timeout. As it was fast-paced action. Lima Senior still just nine points down, trying to come all the way back and see if they can't get this victory. Yeah, we had a little technical difficulties there. Um, but another timeout. And I think that was, uh, was that Hillary Bradley's last timeout then? They used? It shows them with zero timeouts left. It might be, and that might come up big, especially if Lima Senior is able to whittle this one down and get close, as that pressure from Lima Senior has caused them some issues and gotten them in some positions on the floor where they've had no choice but to call some timeouts. So I, I think... Lima Senior's premier sponsor is Webb Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years, with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. That one's going to go out of bounds. Looked like it was off of Cade Norris's leg and then bounced off the official, but the official says no, last touch by Moore. Oops, they missed one there. Here comes the double team. As Garrett Siever took his eyes off of that one. Lost his footing, it looks like. Let's make sure he's not too shaken up. He's going to make a trip to the free throw line. Double bonus the rest of the way here. And uh, the, the pressure from seniors really starting to bother uh, Bradley. I, you know, when you play a game last night, don't play many players, and then play in the, in the afternoon on a Saturday, I think they're starting to wear down a little bit. We know Lima Senior is in great condition. Coach Simpson is one of the things he prides his team's team on. They're deep, they're well conditioned. These are the types of games that they tend to excel in is when they got to grind it. Other teams seem to be slowing down, but they seem to be ramping up, and that may come into play here as we're still just a 10-point game, but at times Lima Senior's gone on spurts and able to score, score, score a lot of points in a short amount of time. The two coaches' sons have uh, between them, you know, 23 and 15, 38 points, and they're 60. Isaiah Wilson gets rid of it over to Hutchins. Here's Moore. He's been big here in the fourth quarter for the Spartans. Marion Glenn. He can hit those from distance, but not able to connect on that one. Lima Senior still has plenty of time. They have three timeouts and stop the clock. They can do everything they want to do. They, they just need some mistakes by Bradley, like that right there. They're going to stay over and back. As the official says, Garrett Siever knocked that one off of his leg into the backcourt after Jaquel Cotton reached in to knock it loose. So that's exactly what Lima Senior needed. Forced turnover and an opportunity here to get a little bit closer. That appeared to get knocked out of his hand, but I, I'm not sure. Uh, experienced group here made that, made that call, and you got to move on to the next play. Hutchins thought about the three-pointer, but the defense came quickly, so he has to get rid of it. Moore's going to pull up for three. That one's no good. David Heath comes up with the rebound. And, and he's just been a clinic on the backside tonight, the defensive rebound. He's done everything for him. Eric Siever gets it up into the front court, almost lost it, but they will gather it in. Can't call the timeout. Able to get rid of it as Cade Norris gets his hands on it. Marion Glenn almost comes up with that steal. Here's Cade Norris working low against Jaquel Cotton. Kicks it out. Siever, he's going to drive, drops it down to Heath. Heath with the hesitation. Can't get it to go. Great play by Jagger Hutchins to get all basketball on that one to send it back. And Senior did everything right there but grabbed the ball. And now time is becoming a factor. We're going to have a foul. See who gets this one gets called on. It looks like it's going to be on Cotton. That'll be his third. And pretty much everybody on the, on the team has three or four fouls right now. That, that was uh, Cotton's fourth. Again, the scoreboard helped me out there. Jaquel Cotton, they've got a couple of them that are going to have to be careful here as we get down to it. Lima Senior's going to have to foul with a couple of different players with four fouls. Cade Norris comes up with the free throw. They'll do a lot of offense, defense subs, and, and, and there's going to be a lot of free throws here that are coming up. Miller Bradley has been excellent from the free throw line all night long. It missed two tonight, I believe, and that's it. And again, Norris and Seaver with 
40 points between them and just have played. Two coaches' sons have played an excellent game tonight. Morris connects on both from the Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw line. 2.36 left to go in the game. Lima Senior down 62-49. Isaiah Wilson works over the screen, pulls up for three. That one's no good. Ends up in the hands of Seaver. And Hutchins is going to get whistled for a foul again. Agar Hutchins just picked up his fourth foul. This will be a good uh, learning lesson for Lima Senior tonight, too. You know, the tournament run, they're going to have some games like this where people try to control tempo. I'm not sure they're going to see a shooting display like this tonight, but uh, this should help them in the tournament trail this game tonight. The eight three-pointers in the first half really seemed to be the differences. Lima Senior stayed close, made runs, but those three-pointers have loomed large as their comeback looks like it may fall short. Still plenty of time, but they can't have any wasted possessions now. No, 15-point game with 220, and they're running out of time. Brandon Moore, he goes for the drive. No shot, but foul's going to get called on Andrew Lamb. That would be the only the sixteenth foul for the Jags, so this one's going to go out of bounds. The Lima Senior, if they can get some more fouls and get some more clock stoppage, they'll shoot free throws. Yeah, and they have three timeouts, so they, they can score and stop it so, and set their press up, and they, but they have to score. And have some hand fighting down low between Lamb and Brandon Moore. And looks like Brandon Moore is going to get whistled for the foul. If that's the case, I believe that might be five on him. And I think he just got a technical foul as well. So Brandon Moore is going to be out of the game. He's going to have to get subbed out. There's going to be two free throws in a technical, two free throws in the ball on the side. So there's, this could get out of hand, uh, you know, here late. Brandon Moore, I believe, had four fouls prior to that personal. I'm not sure who the technical foul is assessed on. because If it's on a player, that would also be another foul. Both free throws made by Norse. The ball will go out of bounds to the Jags. I thought there would, there would be two more free throws here. Uh, it, must, it was an offensive foul. That's why they, there's no free throws on that. And Norris takes the screen, and he goes easy into the back, uh, into the lane for two. I, I think uh, Coach Simpson's going to clear his bench here with two minutes to go. Hutchins lets the three-pointer go. He's able to connect. As Jagger Hutchins now has two three-pointers on the night. I guess Coach Norris didn't need any more timeouts because Coach uh, Simpson is waving the flag here. Leah Bradley now content with just holding it away from the basket, letting this clock run. Aid Norris has played a heck of a game tonight. 29 points by Cade Norris. Got his thousandth career point tonight. He is going to lead his team to a victory. And we do have a foul. This one will be on Jagger Hutchins. That will be his fifth, so he will also foul out of this game. And that, and that, that actually is a good foul to get other players in the game. I mean, it's high school basketball. Coach Simpson's trying to get other players in the, in the game. Didn't want to call a timeout there to stop the game, but... That helps get players in the game, and looks like they're going to the bench right now. Zion Jackson coming back into the game. Number 21, Sincere Horace and Sorrell's into the game. Number 14, Caden Hampton. Number 12, Kelly Sorrell's Jr. And number 15, Javion Walton all coming in for the Spartans. And Hilliard Bradley's going to throw their bench too here as well.
Andrew Lamb make his first free throw. Number 30, Dunk. Duncan Spaulding coming into the game. Justin Chapman coming into the game, as is Jordan Reed Davis and Justin Brown. See Andrew Lamb check out as number 35, Chris Kill, will finish out the changes for the Jacks. This is great to see kids that work hard all, all week in practice get a chance to, you know, the last minute of the game, the, the gym's starting to fill up and for the next game, and it's, it's, fun, it's a fun uh, chance to see other guys play. There's been some great basketball here at Ottawa Glandorf today, the OG Winter Classic. We still have one game left to go, Lakota East against OG. OG coming off a big win last night against Shawnee, where they actually found themselves down by a point after the first quarter, but then ended up with a total of 95 as the offense put on a show. Colin White does what Colin White does. Had a couple of highlight jams last night as well. He's one of the most impressive players in this area. Yes, Leon he, Wong's three-pointer, no good. Rebound yeah. comes down to the Jags. Yes, he is, and he's uh, looking forward to tonight, and I think he has a little extra eye on next Friday night when Defiance comes into town for the WDL Championship. Final 20 seconds of this one as the Hilliard, uh, Bradley, excuse me, Hilliard Bradley Jaguars are going to come away with a big victory over Lima Senior. Lima Senior, won winners of their last eight of their last nine. Still a couple of difficult games. They got their rivals Finley to end the season. Play Trotwood Madison and Fremont Ross on the schedule. So plenty of games left to kind of get things back right, lined up the way that they need to be. And a tough loss, though, for the Spartans tonight. Yeah, it was a good learning lesson from them. I think they're, they're going to learn a lot about this game. Watch this film. Uh, they've been playing great, but they ran, ran into a butt saw tonight with Hillier Bradley, the way they shot the basketball and controlled the defensive glass. And, and as it comes to tournament time, these kind of games will help you win or lose, uh, finish year strong. So we are going to step aside, and when we come back, we'll have tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner. Stay tuned. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back to the Supreme Court, where the Hilliard Bradley Jaguars knocked off the Lima Senior Spartan 70 to 52. Take a look at tonight's Dolly Hustle Award winner. After some conversations up here in the booth, it was kind of an easy choice. We had a thousand point score tonight. Cade Norris, 29 points overall. Congratulations to him. Yeah, Cade is kind of local. Cade is uh, kind of local with his dad playing at Crestview, coach of St. John's. Uh, he's uh, now at, at Hilliard. Uh, Bradley and had a great game tonight to 29 points and scored a thousand points and did a lot of little things for his team as well. So Caden Norris helps his team come away with a big victory here tonight at the OG Winter Classic. Lima Senior uh, picked up another loss tonight but at times looked really good. You know I think that onslaught of uh, the three-pointers early on was just a little bit too much for them to overcome. Yeah that Saturday afternoon start was a little different for them and, and after a great win last night they just didn't respond very well. Plus, the, the 8 for 12 three-point shooting by Bradley, they couldn't overcome that snowball. And they got to 9 at one point in the fourth quarter, but just couldn't get over the hill. And, and they're going to learn from this and get better. So that is just going to about wrap it up for us here at Robert J. Hermiller Gymnasium. I'd like to thank our crew, everybody in the truck and working the cameras, doing an excellent job. As always, we appreciate everything that you guys do. One final time from the Supreme Court, Hilliard Bradley Jacks come away with the victory 70-52 over the Lima Senior Spartans. Thanks for tuning in and have a great night, everybody.